we have new academic standards, we have new accountability system, mm -hmm. and we used a method of getting stakeholder feedback to develop that, which really worked. So we applied that to this. It worked so well, you're, you shot way up we on did. academic standards. I mean, right? So that's, let's take that for example. We really set a high bar with rigorous, uh, meaningful academic standards, right. which are what you teach in different grades, okay? And um, we catapulted from 47th lowest in the country, but with new academic standards, we right. moved to an A rating among the top 17 in the country, that which is, is a huge leap. All right, guys, what's going on? Caden Cleveland back here again with another episode of OK Senate on Deck. Well, along with President Pro Tem in the Oklahoma Senate, Senator Greg Treat, we are going to be having special guest on the show this week, Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister. Superintendent Hoffmeister has been in that position for the last few years now, and she's seen a lot of different changes go on in the field of education. So what we're going to be talking about today is the latest updates in education and also how the legislature has actually been able to aid and, and further that progress in, in education in Oklahoma. So hang tight, guys. Got a lot of education topics to discuss today, a lot of very important issues to uh, break down. So hang tight. We will be right back. All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of OK Senate On Deck. As I mentioned just a moment ago, we have Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister on the show with this week. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, first of all. This is awesome. Thank you, and it's great to be here, and school is back in swing. Love so it. Love we, it. It's a great time of year. Yes, and then just like every week, of course, we have Pre President Pro Tem in the Oklahoma Senate, Senator Greg Treat. Senator yeah, Spencer. I'm glad school's back in swing. My yeah. three kids are... <laughs> Helps out your schedule. Yeah, yeah, it does, a little yeah. bit. That just, make, that just means you have more meetings, is what that means. More Meetings, sports, uh, all, all the fun stuff. Well, hey, uh, Superintendent, we uh, each week when we have different guests on, we try to get to know them just a little bit more, okay. just for our viewers at home that may not know uh, all about you. So you've been superintendent for state of Oklahoma for how many years now? Uh, three, no, four and a half years. Oh, you almost got yeah. you there, right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, so I just won the re-election mm -hmm. and uh, 2018 then, and we're coming up on the finishing the first year of my second session. Love it. Absolutely. Well, each week we try to get uh, to know our guests a little bit better and also to get yeah. to know him a little bit better. I like to do a little few icebreaker questions just to, so our guests and our viewers can get to know you all better. Um, so a few quick questions for you real quick as we get everything going before we get into all the real talk, the deep talk for what's going on here in Oklahoma. Uh, first question. I'll throw this to you first. Okay, uh, so this is time. not like Jeopardy where we buzz in. No, no. I'm going to ask <laughs> that's, that's a that would be fun. I have to do that. I'm, I'm going to answer about her. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have to ask, and answer and, and in the form of a question. Of a question. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay, just straight up questions okay. here just to get to know you. So, Superintendent, uh, what is the best way to drink your coffee? How do you, how do you take your coffee? Black. Just straight black, really? Yes. That's the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Okay. <laughs> so I have to admit that... I enjoy it in, in many ways. Okay. But, just just uh, black. But there's nothing right. like... Fall's uh, approaching. I didn't know if you were going to get the coffee. pumpkin spice answer, you know, or mm. something like that. I mean, it's mm. not bad. Hey, hey, he's trying to say, yep. He's okay. going to make fun of you if you say right. pumpkin spice. Right. Yes, you, you, you had the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I, I didn't drink black coffee until, until I started working for him, and then I just needed that extra jolt. So I'm going to try to keep no up with time it. To dress it up and you just got to have your cup of joe you it. just had it love it uh second question here for both of you senator i'll throw this to you first what is uh, or who is your favorite political icon that you have oh ronald reagan without oh that was mine really? well, no fair hey, we, we can share that? we can share hey that is plenty of people's <laughs> political icon no yeah doubt. so how come no no i i was young when he was president mm -hmm. and uh i remember uh watching him after the challenger right. explosion uh, and talking about people uh, slipping the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. And, wow. and uh, I fell in love with him and his ability to communicate uh, right then. That's really cool. Uh, and that? so he was the first president I ever voted for. Really? And uh, also, it was, it, and I was, it was, you know, I just turned 18. Right. And, and then in that fall, got to cast that vote. Gotcha. Um, but for me, it was his ability to work across the aisle. That's really cool. So along with just the president that he was, also being able to, that get was your first done. president, and get things get done. Get things done. Love That's it. Absolutely. Okay, last question here. Uh, who is your favorite, and since we're on the topic of education today, who is your favorite or most influential teacher 
that you had when you were in school? Superintendent, I'll throw that to you first. So I have two. Okay. One is my second grade teacher, Miss Keck. Uh-huh. Uh, I had a real struggle reading. And so she would read every day after recess. And I could still hear the words from Charlotte's Web. Right. And I just remember wishing mm-hmm. I could read that book myself. Gotcha. And I couldn't. That's really cool. Uh, so then fast forward to my 10th grade teacher, Debbie Applegate who convinced me I could write. And I fell in love with that. I wanted to be like her. So I went to college and began majoring That's in really cool. literature and English, uh, which then later took me down the path of becoming a teacher. That's awesome. So you can all go relay all yeah. the way back to her and kind of point back to yeah. the influence just, that she had on she, you. That's I cool. wanted to be her. That's awesome. Pro Tim, how about you? So it's going to sound like I'm copying her, but I have I'm going to go three. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The classic one. Yeah, one She's going to think of another here in a second. But no, no, there are three. And honestly, I didn't know that your story on that. Mm-hmm. So between second and third grade, I was put in summer school uh, because I couldn't read, mm-hmm. uh, at least at grade level. Yeah. And Mrs. Lee uh, spent time with me one-on-one. And I went from behind in reading to advanced in reading wow. just with her spending time with me. Wow. Uh, that summer. I think my parents were putting me in summer school and agreeing to do that, but Mrs. Lee made a huge, huge impact. Okay, so Mrs. Lee. Mrs. Belt. Mrs. Belt. Uh, Mrs. Belt was my ten, ninth and 10th grade English teacher uh, who actually taught me that I had some skill in writing too and made me, I was deathly shy, she oh. made me get up in front of class and present my writing. Really? Uh, and that was life transforming. I would not me. anticipate you having any problem with shyness. No, I was, I was very, very shy. Really? Uh, okay. And so, uh, but she, in fact, I got uh, voted most changed in my high school reunion because I actually wow. talked. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, but Mrs. Bell, uh, her father was the one that built the Blue Well mm-hmm. uh, there in Katusa. He was huh. one of the co-founders. Really? Of yeah, huh. she was awesome. And then Mrs. Rinaldi, who I just went to her funeral last year, two, a year and a half ago. Uh, she was my uh, trigonometry, math analysis, calculus right. teacher. Wow. And she was awesome. Wow. Uh, Skilled-wise, I mean, she taught me more uh, about uh, math than anyone ever could. That's really cool. I, I love just hearing from you guys and, and yeah. that y'all can point out a few individual teachers who made such a huge difference in your life. So kind of springboarding off that into mm-hmm. our first topic for today. I wanted to actually bring up with uh, both of you, the Teacher of the Year uh, yeah. was just announced just a few days ago. It was uh, Gina, Gina Nelson, J- right? Gina Nelson, gotcha. that's right. And she actually teaches in your district, right? Yeah, yeah, Deer Creek Middle School. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I share that with Senator Bice and some others, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really proud my son's going to be cool. going to Deer Creek Middle School next year, so hopefully he gets her. Love it. So there's oh, no, she'll be on a sabbatical, I guess, for a year. We're changing things. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, she's going to stay. Oh, she's awesome. going to stay in the classroom. Um, this is something that we we made a shift a little while ago mm-hmm. where we kept them in the classroom and then pulled them out the next year. But we got some feedback from our teachers who were in that position, and they said, you know what? We really don't want to leave the classroom. Wow. We want to have a sub when it's time to leave to go take care of some of the, right. the national competition and the opportunities to speak around the state. Right. And we thought, let's do that. Let, let's mm-hmm. not take our best teachers that have just been identified as the exemplar uh, in the state and remove them. Instead, let's invite people That's in. Cool. And uh, so we're doing that. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. But here's here's something really, really neat that happened mm-hmm. the at the, at the um, Teacher of the Year ceremony, which, by the way, Senator Treat has been one of our main judges that helped select from 12 to 1 yep. in in, in recent years, so we appreciate that. So yeah. You know all about this. I knew both of you are very, very much involved in this whole process. Yeah, she invited me to be a part of it. That's it's really right. cool. There's a lot of all those finalists are spectacular. Awesome. I mean, they're just amazing, and it really is a neat view to have that that lens yeah. that day. Uh, it's a whole day process yeah. when they're being interviewed. So what we found out. Her, her name is called, and she goes to the stage, and we knew she had a story about being a child, having trauma in her life, right. um, being right on the verge of making some really de- maybe devastating decisions. And she said, there is a man who changed my life, a teacher who's in this building right now. And it was her teacher who was a former state teacher of the year, Stephen Smallwood from, where is it, Phil? Broken from Broken Bow. That's awesome. And so he's there along with a row of other teachers from past years. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is she was in his video 
when he was being judged oh, to be cool. teacher of the year and truly through his classes and his real connection, right. it did make a life change Love that. and it came full circle. That is so uh, cool. September 7th. That's cool. And it's cool that she's in your, she works in your district and you get to interact with them a little bit more. So yeah, so that's really cool. She is super special, but all the teachers that are in our classroom, yeah. I mean, they just, the, the 12 finalists I get to meet yeah. with most years yeah. and she highlights them. But they're really an example of, of teachers all across the state okay. doing this day in and day out. And one more thing, it's not fin we're not done with those finalists. Mm -hmm. um, each year, we include them as part of our teacher advisory group. And uh, that has been such an important cool. feedback uh, for us and a partnership mm -hmm. with those who have been selected uh, as our 12 finalists. That is awesome. Okay, so something else that happened in September along with mm -hmm. uh, the announcement for the Teacher of the Year uh, was the Attendance Awareness Month. We've seen yes. a little bit about that going on throughout the country, just being promoted. Right. Uh, Superintendent, would you mind walking us through uh, what, what exactly that is and why it's such an, an important mm -hmm. uh, an, an important month for education? Well, it's how we can set the table mm -hmm. for a great year, first of all, and that's right. why September is the year, or is the month we're highlighting Getting everything this. going, right? Yeah, that's um, awesome. And really, it's talking about how much attendance matters. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about... Um, you know, seat time. It's really about the continuity, the momentum in learning. And we know through research now that when a student is absent uh, for more than 10% of the time, they actually really regress and fall back. Right. And so we built that in to our school accountability system. And that's something that based on the research, right. very compelling research, 36 other states also included in their federally required school report cards. Really? Uh, so bringing this focus back on mm -hmm. how much it um, matters for schools to look at why is a student absent? Right. Um, what's keeping them from being at school? Is it a health issue? Mm -hmm. Is it an issue of transportation? Um, they're home alone, and if they miss the bus, there's no way to get them there right. because a parent is working. Mm -hmm. Or are there real obstacles that um, might be something that they could help solve? Wow. Like we've seen schools, I know this sounds far-fetched, mm -hmm. but this was the barrier and how a school addressed it. Um, they put laundry machines so that some of the students weren't coming to school because they didn't have clean clothes. Wow. Um, that's something that we can fix mm -hmm. and give kids their dignity. Um, and there are other things that when we take the time to understand why a student is chronically absent, that schools can make a difference. But what we know is that kids want to come when there's a connection with their teacher right. and with their peers. And so being a part of it, you know, you got to be here to get where you want to go. Right. And that's that's really the message around that's attendance. Awesome. That's really cool. So attendance was actually something that, uh, Pro Tim, you, you and uh, led the legislature and uh, paying close attention to this year uh, with some legislation. Can you kind of point to some of the work that's been done there? Yeah, a huge part of the battle is getting people to show up. Yeah, uh, And so Oklahoma, the number of calendar days that we go to school is lower than a lot of our peer states around the around the country. Yeah. And we were looking at that. Uh, a lot of people mislabeled uh, some legislation this year, but Senate Bill 441 uh, sets a minimum of 165 hours. Yeah. And so schools, uh, it's not going to be implemented immediately. So actually, uh, Joy and her team have a huge mm -hmm. part in implementing that. I think you just set, yeah. set out some parameters on that. Oh, I'd okay. be interested to know about that. But it yeah, was sure. it, it got labeled a four-day uh, school week deal, but it was about much more than that. It's about getting uh, students yeah. in the classroom making sure that the student is the center of attention and making sure that their achievement uh, is front and center. So that was one of those bills mm -hmm. this year that, that really got a ton of attention and I think a lot of misunderstanding around it because right. there were different versions of the bill, you know, different things right. like that. Um, so uh, just real quickly, so for everybody at home that may not know the background on this bill, what exactly was, was the purpose in this and what does yeah. it do now? So the purpose was to make sure that when we set a school calendar right. that the kid's achievement, the child's achievement is front and center yeah. on how we do it. It's not about anything else. It's about how can we get those kids in there in the classroom to learn right. in front of excellent teachers that right. we were just talking about earlier. So what the bill ended up through compromise was 165 days minimum. And then if you wanted to go lower than that, you had to 
uh, go to the State Department of Education and ask for an exemption. We don't have the rules set out for that yet, right. so we're in the process. Yeah. You're in the process of yeah, setting the rules. Yeah, which is where up. the Board of Education comes in, right? Mm-hmm. So, That's exactly right. Superintendent, can you kind of give us yeah. an update there and what's going on? So what we did is, you know, we have new academic standards, we have new accountability system, mm-hmm. and we used a method of getting stakeholder feedback to develop that, which really worked. So we applied that to this. It worked so well, you're, you shot way up we on did. academic standards. I mean, right? So that's, let's take that for example. We really set a high bar with rigorous, uh, meaningful academic standards, which are what you teach in different grades, okay? And um, we catapulted from 47th lowest in the country, but with new academic standards, we moved to an A rating among the top 17 in the country, which is is a huge leap. So is that just recent? That that was, yes. So right in the very first term, we had to go uh, work on new math and English language arts academic standards. That's really And then when we assess those or take those state tests in in the spring, um, many states can lower the bar on what they call success. And actually, Oklahoma had done that in the past. Mm -hmm. And so then when our kids took the ACT or SAT, they you weren't the quite ready, it, yeah. right? And so what we wanted to do was align it so that our success measure matched that national comparability and there weren't any surprises. And so there was a recent study just recently that came out that said, yes, you did that. Exactly. And again, we leapfrogged from very bottom all the way up to some of the very top states in that real truing of how we define success or proficiency. Mm -hmm. All right. So now back to what you were talking about. Okay. Um, Attendance and school year and the length of how long we go. Mm -hmm. What we're not talking about, which is real important, is summer. So when you shorten or truncate the school year Mm -hmm. to so short, which we have some schools going only 139 or 134 days, I mean, whoa, out of 365 days, that's it? What you end up doing is lengthening the summer. And the summer learning slide is real. It exists. But for kids in poverty, for kids who struggle, who have trauma, but particularly those of so, of low socioeconomic status, and in Oklahoma we have, you know, 61% of our kids mm-hmm. qualify for free and reduced price lunch. Their, their fall or slide from one year to the next over summer is really deeply right. pronounced, right. and they can lose up to three years of growth by fifth grade. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that's why this matters. This is really a civil rights issue. <laughs> this is about access to a high quality opportunity to learn. And if the doors are closed um, and you don't have school right. because you have a longer summer, that is going to negatively impact schools, kids, Mm -hmm. uh, teachers are going to spend more and more time relearning. And we know kids that struggle need to overlearn. So they need more time. So this is something that we appreciate the leadership and really, really working to find consensus on a bill that both the House, the Senate and the governor could support. And now we're working out those um, details with a working group Mm -hmm. that just concluded their work. And those recommendations are going to um, the state board eventually. We're going to talk to the governor's office and to leadership and say, okay, are we on the right path here? Because we want to get to the end and have consensus in the legislature. Man, I should have had you come present on the Senate floor. That was, that was, that was excellent. That was a lot better, yeah. <laughs> no, also, I mean, just just uh, as important as you said, that, that bill, Senate Bill 441, uh, a lot of misunderstanding, but really is such a significant and important bill and, and student awareness of attendance and things like that. So thank you for walking us through that. It's very important. Well, we're a little bit short on time, but just real quickly, I wanted to get, um, Senator Treat, I'll throw this to you first, but can you give us a quick recap of uh, some of the new investments that the legislature has made into education this year? I know there was a ton of uh, investment into uh, specifically for classroom funding. Yeah. Uh, can you kind to speak to that just a little bit? Yeah. Uh, the Oklahoma Senate, Republicans at least, we, we really want to emphasize classroom funding yeah. this year more than anything. And we, we came out with a plan to put $200 million. We didn't get there, but we set a high expectation yes. of trying to get that uh, that way. It was a two-year process. You know, We passed the revenue, and then we passed a, a tremendous pay raise, uh, not this session, but the session before. Right. And all of us stood up there and said, this is not a one and done. Yes. 
uh, and we had to follow up on that. So we gave an average of what was it the previous year was about 6100 on average, mm -hmm. That's and then right. uh, 1200 this year. Yeah, $6,100 on average across the board for all teachers in the state, mm -hmm. and now this year, 1200 on average for all teachers. So what is... $7,300 that's, in, of an increase. That's a that's pretty significant, significant amount, isn't it? So what has that done for, for Oklahoma teachers? Who well, kind of so teachers? what we know from teachers mm -hmm. that left the classroom, and we polled them to ask, why did you leave, and what would it take to get you back? Pay was part of it, but predominantly, they were talking about the need for classroom support. Mm. And when they say that, that means people that can provide professional supports to kids, like speech language pathology, uh, school psychologists, a counselor, Counselors, right, exactly, yeah. um, a, a reading tutor, a reading specialist. Mm -hmm. So there are those others that can now be hired because of nearly $75 million new dollars. Right. Reading specialists like Mrs. Lee that I was talking that's about. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And you can see yeah. Yes. So that's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we can also hire more teachers right. with that money because the pay raise had money to pay for those pay raises. But those are for the existing teachers. Right. We needed that $75 million new dollars into the classroom to be able to go out and hire back those teachers or those individuals that can provide the kind of support teachers told right. us kids need. Yeah, that's cool. And I think finally, the Reading Sufficiency Act was nearly doubled in funding fully funding that for the first time in our state's yep. history with $12 million earmarked just for struggling readers in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. And we are really going to see the yeah. difference made. But that just started. So people have to recognize we're just at month one in the new school year. That's good. I, we did an interview with Senator Stanislavski, who was mm -hmm. a, uh, very uh, impactful on that Reading yeah. Sufficiency Act funding. And one line that he said that I really liked was that uh, the importance of this program is so that when third graders are, are in school, they're not uh, learning to read, but they're now yeah. reading to learn. Right. Uh, and that's what this program does. So one other thing I want to mention to that, too, is Oklahoma can absolutely meet the needs of kids if our teachers are teaching based yeah. on the latest research in the science of reading. That involves retraining a lot of teachers, yeah. and especially those brand new emergency certified teachers who are stepping in right now while we do have still a teacher shortage. And that shortage is not going to be over with. Right. like that. It's going to take years for people to go into college, become a teacher, and come out right. and be ready for classrooms. So in the interim, we have adults that are saying, I'll do a second career, I'll step in, but what we're going to do in the State Department is take our resources to train them, and we have we are in the process of every emergency certified teacher that's teaching pre-K through third grade is going to get that training by November 15th, nice. and we're providing it free of charge. Love that. Love that. So, do you have anything to add there? No, that's excellent. I mean, our commitment to education, her commitment to education is unwavering. Yes. And we're going to continue to make sure we, we keep that investment up and continue to keep our foot on the pedal because you'll see these results generationally. Right. Uh, and this is not something that you see immediate results except in the in the paycheck. Mm -hmm. And that was an important step, mm -hmm. steps, I should say. But classroom funding is is really extremely important. I know my kids go to Deer Creek. And uh, we're happy to provide paper and staples and, and all that stuff, but it's really sad when our kids have to come home with paper saying, Dad, Mom, they need another ream of paper yeah. at school so they can make copies right. to get everyone's homework yeah. out. And, and that's it, real. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, we get it in Deer Creek, so I'm sure uh, parents all across the state yeah. are getting that same thing and probably to a greater extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much, Superintendent. Thank, thank you so you. much for coming on the show oh. here and uh, just talking education. It's like pro tem, like you said, it's it's a continued focus. It's the number one uh, agenda item each year. We're, we're going to focus on, continue to focus on education. So thank you both for taking the time just to further explain this to it, update, update us on the latest uh, uh, growth and latest improvements in education. It's been an awesome deal having you on here. Well, and I thank the leadership. I thank you for your partnership, but um, it is wonderful to see the legislature mm -hmm. focused on kids. Yeah. That's what's That's going it. to make our state a top 10 state. That's it. Love it. Pro Tim, Absolutely. No.
Thank you, Superintendent. Yeah. Thank you for coming yeah. on. Thank you for your friendship it. and thank you for your leadership uh, you. here in Oklahoma. You too. Love that. Well, hey guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, if you want to, uh, uh, if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, feel free to comment down below this video or email us here at the podcast. It's uh, on deck at okcenter.gov. Uh, we receive uh, questions there, and feel free to uh, ask us anything, and we'll be able to get back to you with uh, more information. So, uh, Superintendent, thank you again for joining yeah. us. And uh, if you want to view this. Uh, this podcast on iTunes. All you have to do is go search Oklahoma Senate Republicans, and it'll be the first uh, podcast there. Feel free to give us a subscribe and leave us a nice review. Emphasis on nice review, right? <laughs> right. right. Tim? Yes. 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 Nice you. review. <laughs> nice questions. No. Thank you so much. Have a good. Yeah. Day. This Absolutely. is great, guys. Thank Appreciate you again, it. and you guys have a great day. We'll see you again on our next episode of OK Senate on Deck. Bye.